So Omega have replaced the first Omega in space, which was discontinued in 2020, with the new first Omega in space. Now it's been quite a year for Mark IIs of these anniversary models. So let's have a look into this watch and see if it's the right speedy for you. I'm Andy and welcome to the English Watch. Now this channel is about me and my watch collecting journey, an amateur enthusiast with an eye for detail, helping like-minded individuals like you start your watch collecting journey. Now if you like this video, why not give it a thumbs up and whilst you're there, why not subscribe? Go on, I dare you. Now before we go on to talk about the new first Omega in Space, the Speedmaster Anniversary Edition, I'm going to show you my Speedmaster, which is a 2018 on the old movement, 1861, and it's on this Artem NATO strap, which is like a blue and grey. Now I don't normally wear NATO straps, but I actually think this one is pretty comfortable. So we've recently had a couple of re-editions of uh, anniversary watches from Amiga. I guess the most obvious one is the Apollo 8. So this is a watch that, you know, fantastic in its execution. Uh, you know, the technical detail, the finishing, that little Saturn V rocket on the constant second sand. But for me, a bit of a waste of time because I thought the, the original Apollo 8 in 2018, 50th anniversary of you know, Apollo 8, um, made perfect sense. To then do a Mark II for the, I guess it would have been the 55th or thereabouts, just a little bit pointless. And what, we're going to have a 60th, maybe? But what about some of the other Apollo missions? Don't know. Anyway, so we now have the first Omega in space. So what Amiga have, which is, I'm not going to say it's unique, but certainly in the, the those top brands, it's not something Rolex do, uh, they have their regular lines which are the modern interpretations but then they have their heritage lines so you have the diver heritage models with 300m and you have the speedmaster ones with watches like the uh, the 57 so with the first omega in space this is another re-edition of uh, an old classic so although it is a special or anniversary model as was the one from 2012 which was discontinued in 2020 a watch I nearly bought back when it was, I think it was about four grand. Ah, those were the days. Um, so I think this one sits nicely in the heritage line and I can see them uh, keeping this one and, and you know, updating it over time um, because you know it's not a special like the Apollo 8, it's part of the model line. Now this watch now retails at 7,400 pounds. Now it does go on a bracelet uh, and two leather straps which are a bit cheaper but I think, yeah, get it on the bracelet. Now, I think the black leather strap looks pretty cool. Uh, now, when I tried it on the other week, I tried it on with the bracelet. I have to say it fit really nicely. Now, you do hear uh, that a lot of reviewers will say, well, it's smaller than the Speedmaster, the professional. Yeah, this one. Well, it is and it isn't. Um, the bezel is the same, 39.5 millimeters. The only difference is, I mean, this one's a 42, the new one's 39 and a half, which is the size of the bezel, is the fact that it doesn't have crown guards. So for me, I think it sits exactly the same on the wrist. Uh, yes, the lugs are different because it's got the straight lug design from the CK2998 versus the yeah the more modern sort of twisted lyre lug style of, of the current one. So it does have those differentiators, but size-wise, I think if you can wear this one you can wear, wear the new one and vice versa. Now my first impressions, it's great that Amiga are doing these things. I thought the watch wore really lovely. Um, I think the uh, sapphire crystal, they've made it into a dome crystal to make it look like the sort of curved uh, edge of the Hesselite crystal that you get on this one. I think the uh, the sapphire on the normal Speedmaster is a bit more square edge and you get that traditional milky ring that you know, when you sort of tilt it on your wrist so there's little details that Amiga tend to do like that crystal that maybe fly under the radar but I think I like the fact that they really sweat the details now on the case back it's highly polished um, it's got the hippocampus this one is going to be a, a bit of a scratch magnet so you might want to be careful taking off that case back sticker other than that I think the biggest thing for me and I did like the dial because they've made it a sort of bluey black 
almost metallic dial, which harks back to some of the more uh, vintage dials that they used to have. And it has the step dial and the dot over nice and all that good stuff. But this watch has a very, very heavy use of uh, aged loom. Now on the Ed White, the 321 um, caliber watch that, okay, will be is 14 and a half thousand pounds now. Yeah, almost twice as much. I think it was a little too subtle. But on this one, and again, it's only my eyes, my old eyes, I think they've been a little bit too heavy handed with the with the, the, the brown ink. Uh, I think they could have reined it back a bit. And the thing that makes it stand out the most is the, the bright white seconds hand and the sub registers. It almost looks like um, an old watch with service hands. So I think if they're going to go that heavy on the aged luminosity, they need to age the white a bit. So just make it a little bit off white, just to make it look a bit old. What we have at the moment is the Ed White Pinnacle Calibre 321, 14 and a half thousand pounds. We then have the White Speedmaster Professional, which I really like and um, quite tempted by, to be honest, 7,600 pounds. We then have the regular Speedmaster uh, Professional Sapphire Sandwich at £100 less, 7500 And then we have the first Omega in space at 7400 So this is a watch that's 200 quid less than the white one, which is unusual. And then obviously the Hesselite Professional is 6600 because it's got Hesselite crystal and uh, the closed case back. Now, I always say that the Hesselite version is the purest one, be the one I'd, I'd gravitate to if it was going to be my only Speedmaster. But... I can see how people be swayed by the first Omega in space. I mean, it is, after all, a very uh, handsome watch. Uh, it does have its own history. I mean, this picture here, which you can't really see because there's a reflection on it, is a picture of Wally Sherrard in his um, Mercury capsule wearing uh, his CK2998, which wasn't, at the time, uh, standard issue. It was his own watch. And... Uh, and we're going to be very remiss to not uh, capitalise on that. So I think there's good cause for Amiga to add this one into the collection. Like I said, I think it will be a permanent addition now. Um, I just think they could have toned back the brown a bit uh, on, the, uh, on the loom. So in summary, a nice watch, a decent price, and you can go and buy them now. I mean, I was offered one um, when I went to try this one. He's like, do you want to buy it? I'm like, no, nah, no. Nah. I've said I've already bought a watch, a chronograph this year. In fact, I bought my IWC, which I have to say is quite popular where I'm working at the moment because I'm actually working with some watch nerds who um, I don't really like IWC, but once they've tried it and touched it, oof, they're already looking. So don't knock things till you try them, including the first Omega in space. Now, would I buy one? No, I don't need it in my life. Uh, I've got my original Speedy. I think if I was to get another one, it would be the white dial because it's different. It's the same but different. So it's sort of that black and white salt and pepper. Um, I think that would work. Having another black dial Speedy, it's not what I'm after at the moment. But that's not to say you shouldn't buy it. And if you're a Speedy aficionado, I'm sure you've already bought it. Because ultimately, Amiga love to play to the fan base. And that's one of the things I love about it. Um, great brand for that. Anyway, welcome your thoughts if you tried it on or if you've even bought one. I'll be glad to know. Anyway, leave your comments in the uh, in the space below. And until then, I'm Andy. This has been the English Watch. Take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.